you capable. We bless your name. We worship you, Jesus. There's no one like you, Lord. We glorify your name.
Giving you all the glory and praise. Celebrate your name because you're God. Celebrate your name because you're God. Come on, give the Lord a mighty hand of praise and shout in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Have your seats in the presence of God. Our times are limited. And uh, we thank God for the grace of being here this morning in the second service. We thank God for our visitors who have just come in to be with us this morning. And we appreciate God for the grace and journey masses upon them. And we thank you all for coming here this morning and to be part of this second service. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You're welcome. And... Uh, believe that God is going to speak to us because we have come to listen from God and 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 God never God as his people in vain and even this morning as we gather his presence is with us amen say as we gather his presence is with us hallelujah as I told you in the first service that we have guests today and uh, I uh, want to take this opportunity to to invite uh, my brother, uh, who is our younger brother, our youngest, and uh, thank God for for God saving us. We had a family of priesthood, and uh, we give God all the glory for the the gift and uh, the ministry He has bestowed upon us. And this morning he has come to be with us with his family, his uh, dear wife, and uh, church uh, leaders from where he is also an elder, the Hispania Pefa Church, and one of my, my nephews also is here. So for that honor, I would just want to invite him and uh, his wife to come on the podium, greet us and speak to us in this service and the second and the third service, and they will also introduce the uh, the visitors they came let us appreciate our uh, brother Zachary as he comes to speak to us let's appreciate him in Jesus name let's appreciate him in Jesus name continue appreciating in the name of Jesus amen Amen. I greet you all in the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank God. Let's appreciate Papa in the house for the great work he has been doing. Amen. Amen. Uh, as you've been told, my name is Zachary Church. I'm born again. I love the Lord. With me is my dear wife. I want her to greet you and then we shall continue. Karibu. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. My name is Linia Zachary. Uh, I'm blessed to be here today, this morning. And I thank God for all of you. We're here to receive from the Lord. May the Lord bless you so much. Amen. Amen. God bless you. 
I also came with uh, two brethren. I will want them just to stand and wave. I have Brother Cheche, who is our youth leader in the church. And then uh, our nephew there, Shadrach. God bless you. Uh, I'm here to share the word of God and uh, it's unfortunate that every time I'm here I must ask which language to use because you know for us who are preaching by the border we are very careful about language. Sometimes you may preach and then you realize you are speaking to a quarter of the congregation so very careful but it's alright. I also request to be Reminded of the time uh, because we want the Lord to speak to us in good time and the Lord will bless us. Amen. Uh, every time I come here, I'm excited because I'm in the house of my father. Praise the Lord. You know, he introduced me as a brother, but to me, I know he's a father. And uh, among the many reasons why I love coming here is because this is the house of my father. Amen. Yes, I'll, I'll be speaking more about that in the next service, but for now, we want to go straight into the word of the Lord. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity you've given me to stand here again. You've used me before in this platform, Lord, for your glory. But this is a very new day, and I ask for a new anointing for the glory and honor of your name. Anoint my lips, O oh God. Anoint my mind, my body, my soul, and my everything. That I will speak only that which you purposed to be spoken. Be glorified and be exalted in Jesus' name. Amen. As I was trusting God to share with us the word of God today, the Lord opened my mind to see a topic entitled, Things Don't Just Happen. And that is what I'm going to share with us this morning about things don't just happen happen allow me to begin by sharing a story of a young man who loved the Lord and wanted to serve the Lord so he went somewhere to meet a man of God who had served for some time probably to find out what it takes to be a minister and so the story goes that this young man asked the man of God to pray for him so that he can minister the way he does. You know sometimes when an apostle is here preaching and you know he's a pastor, he's an apostle to so many people. By the way as we were coming, we were also in church. Praise the Lord. We were in church as we were coming. Because the service is live. Amen. And so this man of God told the young man, kneel down, I want to pray for you. The young man knelt down and he put his hand, his head and began to pray. And this is the prayer that he made. Lord, I thank you because of this young man. Because he wants to serve God the way I am serving you. And so it said, and as he laid his hands upon his head, he began to speak. And the first word he said, Lord, I pray that you will be beaten the way I was beaten. The next statement he said, let him be put in prison the way I was put in prison. Let him be denied the way I was denied by my family members. Let him be rejected the way I was rejected by my family members. And then the man said, no. That is not the kind of prayer I wanted. I expected 
expected you to bless me and say I will be a great minister. I expected you to say that I my, my ministry will be greater. I expected you to say that I will walk in a new anointing greater than yours. But the man of God prayer was different. And that is how we are today children of God. When we see a ministry that is flourishing, when we see God using a man of God, when we see God using a woman of God, we admire and we want to be like him. But we forget there is a sacrifice behind what you see. That is why today I am sharing with us saying things don't just happen. Things don't just happen. The ministry you see today did not just come. The people you see serving God today did not just come to serve the way. They, there is a lot of sacrifice that goes into it. There is a lot of prayer that goes into it. There is a, a lot of waiting that goes to it. People don't just become what they are today. Just like that. Praise the Lord. Can you shout things don't just happen. God has always desired to use men. You know, powerful as God is, He has desired to use you. He has desired to use me. He has desired to use us to expand His kingdom. He is an all-powerful God. He can decide to save people without involving man. But He has loved to work with men. And so in the process of working with men, we admire what God is doing in this men of God. But I came to tell us today, there is a lot that goes into it. When an ordinary man surrenders his life to God, God uses this ordinary man to do supernatural things. And that is why when the natural decides to partner with God, supernatural things happen. Hello? I'm saying when the natural agrees with the will of God, supernatural things happen. And that is why I love God for the theme of this year. Because we shall walk in the supernatural. But I came to challenge somebody. Those who shall walk in the supernatural are not just people who will wait and see. There is something that you must put into it for you to be able to experience the supernatural in the house of God. Give him praise in the house if you understand what I'm saying. Behind every success in the spirit, there is great sacrifice, there is great labor. We rarely see the process, we only see the results. Hello? You know, you see the man of God lay a hand on somebody and cancer disappears within a microsecond. And you think it just happened. No, it did not. Ask him. He will tell you the many hours he labored in prayer. He will tell you the many hours he labored in sacrifice. He will tell you the many hours he argued with God. It doesn't just happen. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Those men who surrender to God and decide to take deliberate steps will always experience the move of God. There is a Swahili saying that says, Even in the kingdom it is true. The men of God you see shining today, God has done something in them. Wameundwa na mungu. Wana yesu asifiwe. Watumishi wanao ngara leo wameundwa na mungu. Na wale ambao watakubali kutengenezwa na Mungu wale ambao watakubali kuundwa na Mungu watangara Bwana Yesu asifiwe watatembea katika upako mpya watatembea katika viwango vilivyo vipya 
sio vya kawaida kwa sababu wamekubali kuchongwa kutengenezwa na Mungu. But the painful part of it is the process is never sweet. It is never easy. Praise the Lord. You know, it is unfortunate we are living in a culture where we believe in quick fix. In fact, students no longer study today. Long time ago, a teacher was a custodian of knowledge. But today, you have a challenge in your marriage, you go to Google. You go to Facebook and social media. Quick fix. Don't be surprised even preachers today before they, without listening to God so that they can hear what the Lord is speaking. They copy paste people's sermons. Hello. It happens. Quick fix. You want quick things. But the principle of God has never changed. Everything goes through a process. And that is why Jesus never came as an angel to save people. He had to be born like a man. Because the principle of God is about process. Hello. I'm saying that is why Jesus never came as an angel. He had to be born. He remained in the womb for nine months. He was born like any other child. He had to grow all the 30 years. He had to move all the 33 years and do ministry like any other person. You know God is all powerful. But he respects process. Hello. That is why the government had a problem with the man of God you know who was accused of kidnapping baby, I mean kidnapping baby, babies. You know he tried to explain that it was a miracle but a miracle does not happen like that. God respects process. You cannot you know, you know, just lie, lay your hands on a woman and declare that she will give birth next month. It is impossible. If you go through the Bible, you will realize every miracle baby. The Bible says the man of God will stand and say, next year at a time like this, you will have a baby. Because God respects process. I pray that we accept to move in the principle of process. Praise the Lord. I was laying a foundation, an introductory part of it. So, allow me to teach. And if the Lord allows me, I will also preach. Every time, God will let you do your part. And then he does his. And, and you see, I don't know whether you've ever heard these people are saying, I'm waiting on God, you know. You've been appointed into ministry and you're saying, I'm still waiting on God. My brother, God is waiting on you. Hello? God is waiting on you to do your part. And then he does his. Because you see, he's part of the bargain. He remains faithful. But we confuse it. When you do your part, then God does his. Remember, I'm not saying that the grace does not work. But even grace works in a process. Praise the Lord. Yeah, there are people who imagine they'll just, you know, wake up one day and begin preaching. They'll wake up one day and begin singing. I'll be showing you practical examples of what happened to some of these great men we know. And you, you realize things don't just happen. So if things don't just happen, if they don't just happen, what happens? If things so that they happen. If it doesn't just come up like that, what is the process of the things to happen? And point number one, I want to say, for things to happen in the spiritual realm, in the kingdom of God, in the service of God, in the life of a Christian, it takes the anointing of God. 
it takes the anointing of God. It doesn't just happen. And I want to share with us what this anointing is in a simple definition. We can have many. But I've defined anointing as the empowering of the spirit of God for supernatural accomplishments. The spirit of God comes upon man being a natural person as he is and then he gives him power to do things that ordinary men cannot be able to do. And that quickly takes us to the book of First Kings chapter 18 verse 48 I mean 46 where the theme of this year happens to come from. There is a man there Bible says Elijah and tacking his cloak ahead of Ahab all the way to Jezreel. You see, when the Bible talks about the hand of the Lord coming upon you, it is simply saying that the Lord has anointed you at that particular time for a specific assignment so God wanted to show that he has power over every other thing that the king thought of and so he empowered his servant Elijah that he was able to run and overtook a horse hello that is an empowerment that is empowerment by the Spirit of God. Praise the living God. When you see people making progress that does not appear natural, it means the Lord has anointed them for that progress. When you see the Lord lifting people from the village and taking them into nations to serve God, it has taken the anointing of God. It takes the anointing of God. What does this anointing do? The anointing of God when it comes into a person, it helps you at a high speed. You see, the problem that we have sometimes is we are not very sure about our assignment. So we walk around doing everything everywhere in every way. But when the anointing comes upon you, God never does guesswork. He assigns you on a particular assignment and he tells you this is what you are supposed to do. And as long as you know what you are supposed to do, you move at a high speed. You see, the reason why sometimes calling of God upon us is because we have not received the anointing that enables, enables us to define what exactly There is a specific assignment that is that is why if you look in the book of Isaiah chapter number 60 verse 1 and 3 16 and 21 you will realize what Isaiah 61 verse 1 and 3. The Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And every place you read the Bible and you hear the Word of God talking about the hand of God upon, or the Spirit of God upon, for a specific assignment. When the hand of the Lord came upon the man of God's Accomplish a specific assignment. So when the hand of God comes upon you, there is a specific assignment that comes with it. So the Bible The sovereign Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom to the captives and release from 
So the Lord reveals to the prophet Isaiah the assignment of Jesus Christ as he came. a day when Jesus wanted to declare his mission and vision statement. God in heaven orchestrated everything. He went to the temple. And the Bible says on that particular day that you read in, in Luke chapter 4 uh, verse 16 and 21. He's speaking the same thing. So he was given a scroll to read. And you know God is very interesting. He orchestrates these things. They are orderly. The Bible says he was, that day it was his the Bible says, by the Spirit of God, he was able to open where it is written in the scroll of Isaiah. And the Bible says, the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. And rolling it, where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and to recover sight for the blind to release the oppressed. Praise the living God. So the anointing that was in Christ Jesus defined why he came on earth. When the anointing of God comes upon you, it defines what you are supposed to do. So you don't move around doing everything because when you do everything, you get tired and at the end of it, you do nothing. You've heard of people talking about busy bodies. When you have no anointing, everything, but you have not understood what the anointing is supposed to guide you to a particular assignment. Number two, the anointing teaches you how to do the assignment. Remember our topic is things don't just happen. They take or it takes the anointing of God. So when this anointing comes, it defines what you're supposed to do. And then in the process, it teaches you. Praise the living God. And that is why at times, you can be called into ministry and you don't know how to do it. But as you move on along the way, the Lord reveals himself to you step by step. And then when you have moved a year ahead, you will look back and say, surely it is the Lord who has taken me this far. You realize it was not about you. It was about the anointing that was teaching you systematically. Give him praise in the house if you understand what I'm saying. The anointing teaches you. Remember, I'm not saying you don't need to go to Bible school. Please go. It is important. But even through Bible school, the anointing will teach you. So that you know, how exactly am I supposed to do it? Because this work belongs to God. It is not, it is not of man. And that's why to be a teacher, you need a professor. To teach you how to teach. Praise the Lord. So in the things of God. You need the anointing of God. Through the Holy Spirit. To teach you what to do. Praise the Lord. And sometimes you can even be called into ministry. As I'm speaking now. There could be somebody. Who has been called into ministry. Or has been given a specific assignment. And is full of fear. He doesn't know. How do I do it? I pray that you surrender to the Holy Spirit. He will teach you how to do it. I submit to you there are times you can even be called to minister. Like there are times I've come here. And the Holy Spirit changes the message when I'm here. Without me knowing. Or anywhere else. And you speak to a person who will tell you the same thing. There is a time the Spirit. On the Spirit. Teaches us. They will wonder how you made it. Praise the Lord. Number three, and probably we could read a verse quickly to verify that. First John chapter 2 verse 27. The anointing has the ability to teach. A 
As for you, the anointing you received from him remains in you. And you do not need anyone to teach you. But his anointing teaches you. And as that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as it has taught You see, there is a problem here. There are times people have begun well and we have seen them. They clearly know they are doing what they are doing because they think they have gotten the experience. So they put aside their according to their experience. And that's why the man of God is warning the church. He's saying, just as it has taught you, remain in him. Praise the Lord. You can never reach a point where you say, I have gathered enough experience, now I do not need. You know, there is a time I was sharing with one of our sound technicians in church. You know, I made an observation that every time we buy a new equipment, after two, three days, you will look for the And then I realized, according to him, once he has gone through the manual once, he's done with it. He doesn't need it. Is it? Much in worship. And now you think. You no longer need to submit to the Holy Spirit. You are saying now I can be able. To teach you. Day. You cannot depend on the ashes of today for a new, fresh, refreshing experience with the Lord. You must remain in Him. Do not leave. You must. Leave. If you understand what I'm saying, the anointing will. In the assignment, praise the living God. It gives you power to operate. There is a power that comes through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And don't take me wrong. Because there is a confusion in the church today. That people believe. That olive oil and oil from Israel is the anointing. And so, they sell to people and they tell them that is the anointing. Oil is a symbol. Oil is just a symbol. But the anointing is from the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. So when it comes upon you, it empowers you. And that is what happened to Elijah. He was empowered to run. The anointing empowers you. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. The Bible says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Now, I also want to correct an error here because people believe the Holy Spirit is a power. And sometimes they believe the Holy Spirit is a power. You know, a lay person or a child or a, or, or a person who, who has basic 
understanding will tell you that the Holy Spirit is a power that causes people to fall down when a man of God lays his hands upon them, isn't it? And it is true. But you see, the Holy Spirit is God himself. But now, he gives power. So the Holy Spirit is not power like electricity. The Holy Spirit is God who gives people power to do the assignment of God. So that is why the Bible is very specific. When the Holy Spirit is upon you, then you receive the power. If the Holy Spirit does not come upon you, there is no power. And there is no Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Brethren, things don't just happen. There must be the anointing. Point number two. Why things, why I believe strongly things don't just happen. It takes a serious culture. It takes a Bible living culture for things to happen. I want you to get me clearly. I will, today I will confuse your theology a bit, but understand me. You see, there are people who believe and probably they could be here today keeps the devil away. I'm not talking about that. The Bible. There are people who will tell you that every morning I have one hour Bible study. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about going deeper than Bible study. I'm talking about going deeper than owning three versions of the Bible. I'm talking about deeper than reading the Bible every day. A culture of living the Bible. You see, the Bible contains the mind of God. The Bible contains the mind of God. So, operate in the supernatural God. Hello? When you are living the Bible, it means the mind of God is operating in your life. You no longer do things the way you want to do them, but you do them according to the mind of God. Because the mind of God has been given in the form of the Bible. So when you walk the word of God, when you live the word of God, when you have a cash of living the word of God, you operate in another level that people will not understand you. Praise the Lord. You know, when people are crying about Corona, you know, the mind of God says you shall leave. Praise the Lord. When the economy is bad, hello, the mind of God says Isaac was desert double folds that is the mind of God you know at times you are in a marriage and there is some serious challenge if the mind of God about marriage the Lord. Challenges will come. But the mind of God will tell you. Temptations will come. But the mind of God will tell you that no temptation has ever come to man that is beyond him. But in every temptation, he will make a way for him to succeed the other day. I pray that we leave the mind of God. I pray that we leave the mind of God a culture of living the word of God. And so we profess things we even don't believe. But when you have a culture, it is different. 
Praise the Lord. When you have a culture, you choose to believe the word of God. You know, what of if you believe and doesn't happen? That is not your part is to believe it. God is to do the happening. Praise the Lord. Don't go ahead of God and want to do the happening of God. You will not manage. Praise the Lord. A culture of living the word of God or the Bible. It means being a doer of the word. Living a culture of the Bible means you are a doer of the word. Not a hearer who forgets. You see, the Bible used a very interesting illustration to speak about somebody who hears the word but does not do it. It says, it's like a person who stands in front of a mirror, looks at himself, immediately he turns, he forgets how he was looking like. Imagine. It means being a doer of the word. And that you can get it quickly in the book of James chapter 1 verse 22 living a culture means you are doing the word and i've even given it a further illustration you become a walking bible hello you become a walking bible i mean everything about you the things you do the things you say that the way you behave the way you talk the way you do your things you become a bible you know there's some people they only believe what the bible says when they are in the compound or when they are in the church completely different thing they tell you this is Kenya that is what they believe hello the job they will say this is Kenya we know what happens in Kenya hello I'm not telling you to live according to the perversions of Kenya, I'm asking you God, because you are living in the kingdom of God. Praise the Bible. Do not merely listen. I love this version. Do not merely listen to the world. I mean to the word. Please. By the way, I'm very poor in doing very poor. No wonder I'm a teacher of science. I just want to do things practically and I'll be able to understand them better. I don't like memory. If you ask me how many verses I have memorized, I will not tell you. But I know what the Bible says. I can tell you what the Bible says. Because some people have memorized the heart. My friend, the word that you memorize only goes to your head and cannot help you. The word that will help you is the word that you have put in your head, then transferred to your heart. That is the word that will help you. Because there is a vast category of people who believe when they come. I read somewhere, somebody was saying that when you carry the Bible, the devil. You lying to yourself. There was a time we were doing deliverance some some some, some place, and I, I I saw a man of God taking a Bible and putting it on the head of somebody and saying uh, the word of God curse you, the word of God uh, chase you, devil. The word, of... my friend. They even people because they have bad dreams, they take a Bible and they make it appeal and they think it works. No, that is not the thing I'm talking about. The word that helped Jesus overcome the enemy in temptation was the word in the heart, not the word in the head, not the word in the book. Praise the Lord. So there is a word in the book, there is a word in the head, and there is a word in the heart. The one that helps you is the word in the heart, not the one in the book or the head. Praise the Lord. Memorizing scriptures is good. But goes a step further, put them in the heart. That's why David says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin. 
against you. Why? Because when it is in the heart, nobody, and I mean nobody, can take it. Even if you're not going to church, as long as it is in the heart, it is safe. Praise the Lord. Take the word from the book, put it in the head, transfer into the heart, it will help you. Give him a clap in the house today. And so James is saying, do not be merely listeners of the word, but do what it says. Because when you are a mere listener, you are deceiving yourself. Praise the Lord. Do you know, do you know, studying scriptures can easily make you proud. I realized that when I started doing theology. So I was telling everybody, you know, nowadays I'm in the theology, you know, I'm in the Bible college. I realized it's a dangerous thing to fill the head with information and you're not using it in the right manner. Praise the Lord. May the Lord help us. Now, I want to give two illustrations here. When we talk about the word of God, it is in two categories. And I want you to listen carefully. It is in two categories. We have what we call the logos. And we have what we call the rhema. Now, these are two Greek words. Logos here is a Greek word that means the word that is written. Anything that you will read from the Bible is the Logos. And it has its place. That is why we have been reading the Bible and it, it has a way of building your faith. Praise the Lord. The main function of this Logos is to build your faith, to reach a level where your mind is connected to the mind of God, then you can receive things from God. That's why the Bible says, faith comes by hearing. And by hearing the word of the Lord. But then there is a Rema word, which is a Greek word, which means instant personal word for your life. Instant. Hello. You know God can say, I want to heal you now. Praise the Lord. You will not find that in the Bible. But it is a word for you now, according to your need. Praise the Lord. And God can make the logos become rhema for you. And that is why when you pray as you come to church, and if you don't, you need to tell God, speak to me today. The reason why we can read the same scripture 10 times is because we are looking for a rhema for that season, for that particular time. Praise the Lord. You know, God can speak specifically and say, I am lifting you from this level to this level. You know, it is not the Bible that say it, I am lifting John from this. That word comes specifically in, and in most cases it comes through prophecy. Or a word of knowledge. You know God looks at your state. And he wants to handle your case straight. So he speaks directly. Praise the Lord. And very few people are in that level. Most of us. We are in the written word. But it is still okay. It is a process. Praise the Lord. If you read John chapter 1 verse 1. The Bible says. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Now that is this. But if you go to Acts chapter 13 verse 2, then you realize something different. The Bible says, while they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Now that is a rhema word. Praise the Lord. Very specific about Paul and who? You cannot claim it that is yours. That is not yours. Praise the Lord. And that is why sometimes when the preacher is saying, he's preaching here and he's saying, can you shout yours? Deep within you, if you're not feeling it, it's yours. <laughs> Please, even if you shout. You know, when, when, when a word of prophecy comes, it has to be confirmed with what is in your spirit if both of you are in the mind of God. God does not confuse himself. Praise the Lord. 
Because again, there is a danger in the rhema because people can misuse it and they end up spoiling something good that the Lord intended to be good for his kingdom. Praise the living God. As I conclude in this service, I want to say that the purpose for which we are saved is that we may operate in the supernatural. In other words, that we may operate in the way God intends of us. Child of God, you are not like any other normal politician who speaks things that he doesn't believe and do not come to pass. You are a child of God who speaks the word of God and things become. Because God has put in you the spirit of creating that is in him. That when you speak things, they come to pass. God's intention is that you may leave his word. God's intention is that you may depend upon his anointing. And when you do so, you will walk in the supernatural. I say you will walk in the supernatural. They will look at you and wonder what happened. Like they looked at Peter. They looked at John. And they reasoned that these people are uneducated. They had not gone through theology of that time. They had not been taught the law, but they realized one thing. They had been with Jesus. That means they were with the what? And they were with the anointing. And so they operated differently. God bless you. Welcome, Apostle. Let's appreciate the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you for that wonderful word. Let's stand up on our feet, everybody, and just open your mind and speak to God in prayer. What a timely word, a message that God has spoken to us. In what so tia go to semena buana mchana waleo. Kwanena mbalo mungu amesema nasi mchana waleo. Kareka njia ya ufasaham kubwa. When, 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 when Zachary is teaching, I want just to sit down and listen to him because is a profound teacher i've realized god has given him a gift of teaching and he teaches the word until you are able to understand what he's talking just open your mind and and, and speak to god and tell lord i want to leave your word stay kwa mtu tu wa kuja kanisani nataka niishi kulingana na neno lako bwana nataka nitembee kulingana i want to be a walking bible as i was saying this morning that we want to 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 be people that testify when people look at us they, they realize that we are true believers we are the power of the world in the name of jesus ask god to guide you and lead you child of god can you speak to god in prayer Wachanga mazoea ya ibada. Ebu fungua kinyo chako na useme na mungu kwa maneno ya kinyo chako. Mwambie bwana. Na itaji kukuelewa zaidi. Nataka ni kujue zaidi bwana. Nataka ni zame ndani yako zaidi bwana. Nataka ni ishi sawa sawa na neno lako bwana. Nataka maisha yangu ya kimwili na maisha yangu ya kiroho. Ya onyeshe umungu. Ya onyeshe matendo makubwa ya mungu katika maisha yangu. Sitake kwa mtu tu wakawaida wakwenda kanisha. Nataka bwana niwe na ushuhuda unawe onyesha matendo makubwa ya mungu katika maisha yangu. Speak to God in prayer. Shara mandala la busia. Endelea kuomba maharulipo. Wacha kunyamaza watoto watu wote. Endelea kusema na buwana. Na kupa hizo dakika tano. Manisha kile unasema bele ya mungu. In those five minutes make sure you leave this place transformed. You leave this place changed. You leave this place when, when God has spoken to you. Every time when God speaks to us, he has a reason. Bibidina sema mungu wa kutai, watu wake bila sababu, mungu hawezi kumutuma mtumishu wake kuja mahali hapa, kunena nasi hivi tuapana, mungu wanaitaji kuponya maisha yako, wanaitaji kuponya roho yako, wanaitaji kuponya mawaso yako. Kuna watu mungu wanaponya mchana waleo, kuna watu harizao, sinainuliwa na mwana katika jina la Yesu Christ. Kula mwana!
jambo ambalo Bwana anashughulikia katika maisha yako kwa jina la Yesu wewe jifungue kwa Bwana wewe jitolee kwa Bwana katika jina la Yesu Mungu anatafuta watu ambao wanafungua mioyo yao wanafungua nafsi zao na kumimina mioyo yao na nafsi zao mbele za Bwana katika jina la Yesu mwambie Bwana mchana na subu ya leo ninakusema ndio kwa neno lako Bwana ninasema ndio kwa neno lako subu ya leo Bwana nakubaliana na maneno aliyosema mtumishi wako ya kama Mungu nitatia bidii kukutafuta nitatia bidii kufanya mapenzi yako nitatia bidii kukutumikia wewe Bwana sitafanya mambo kama kawaida nione watu wanasema na Bwana vijana mlio hapa hautashinda bila kutia bidii ukiona watu wengine kama sisi tunakaribia miaka msini kutembeana huyu Yesu haikuwa rahisi tuliamua mambo ya Mungu ni kuamua mwambie Bwana leo ninaamua ninaamua kukufata kwa ukweli ninaamua kukutumikia kwa ukweli ninaamua kufanya mapenzi ya Bwana mwambie Bwana Bwana ninafanya maamuzi maamuzi mengine sio rahisi maamuzi mengine ni maamuzi ambayo ni magumu lakini kwa sababu ninajua ya kwamba kuna hatima kama umeweka mbele yangu Bwana nimeamua mtojana wa leo na subu ya leo kukufanya mapenzi yako Bwana katika jina la Yesu oh sema na Bwana marulipo kila mmoja sema na Bwana Bwana nataka kusikia unasema nini kulingana na neno lako na mtojana wa leo what are you saying as a child of god kila mara Bwana anaposema nawe ni vizuri kusema ni vizuri kusema nawe ni vizuri kusema nawe Asante Yesu Asante Bwana tufanye unavyotaka wewe Bwana tunashuka kwako Bwana tunajiekea kwako Bwana tunaomba tufanye vile unavyotaka wewe sio vile tunavyotaka sisi mapenzi yako yatendeke juu ya maisha yetu Bwana katika jina la Yesu tunakataa kujiongoza tunaomba kuongozwa na roho wako mtakatifu umesema kwa neno lako Bwana wanaongozwa na roho ndio wana wako ndio maombi yetu Bwana kwamba utatuongoza katika njia zetu utatuongoza tuongoze Bwana